Okay, so today's lesson is a continuation of wet medium and pen and ink. And we're going to implement the wash brush as, um, the, as, as it's going to help us develop the values in the drawing. In the, in the past lesson with the pen and ink, we developed values using the cross-hatching technique, right? And um, the results and the amount of work involved is just incredible. The, the, the medium seems very deep in, in all its values and the development takes a lot of time. We learned that it's a very uh, precise way of drawing. Um, the pen tip is very, very accurate and precise. Um, and it takes a tremendous amount of time to develop the values. Now, if we were to um, dilute the ink and use it as a wash to develop some of the values, um, um, let's discover how to do that, okay? So we're gonna put these okay. aside. And last time we used this uh, configuration for our reference model. Um, this time, I think we're going to use the skull and the apple as our reference, right? And so um, let's make sure we have all our materials. We have our piece of Bristol paper. Um, we have our ink, pen. We have a wash brush. We have some water. Um, I need to get a piece of uh, paper towel, right? We have the the ink ink well um, on a on a plate to contain it little bit because it's always um, the potential of spilling is always there right we have the hair dryer okay to dry so our... here we go right so we have um, and and this approach to the to drawing is rather sophisticated in the sense that we're going to sort of shed um, our other uh, design approaches and so to speak we're not going to um, implement the master cube right now. We're going to go f directly towards creating a form with the wash and then embellishing that form with our line work. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and look at how to um, create this wash. Okay, so the first thing I do is I have a, I have a nice palette here, this plate palette. And I want to just put a couple drops of ink there. Now this ink, in terms of the wash, um, the ink goes a long way, meaning that the ink is very strong. And as you'll see, the development of these values, right? Um, you, you don't need much ink to, to create a, a uh, substantial value here, right? So... Um, here we go. So that's it. And so my my drawing technique with this wash is going to be very direct, right? So I'm going to go for um, drawing this apple, right? The apple. I'm going to lay down a shape. Okay, and I'm going to uh, Okay, you can kind of see the the form. I'm going for the form. Okay.
And I'm going to kind of express the light direction there. Okay. Alrighty. And so that lays down my my wash part. Okay. And I'm going to dry it a little bit. Okay, so we've we've dried our drawing a little bit. The papers become a little bit um, distorted. Okay, and flatten it out a bit. There we go. And so there's some nuances there that are expressive, not to worry, right? And so now we um, we're going to implement the drawing part, okay? And so I'm going to be looking at my subject matter, okay? Which is the apple and the skull here, and the background, right? And here we go. And now here we can use some lines. Okay, and so here now we're just um, implementing our line drawing part, right? And we're going to be cross hatching. We're going to be using descriptive line as you see, right? It's a very spontaneous technique of drawing. Right, and so let's look at our apple, right? So we're gonna situate it right about there. Right, we, can, we know how to go around the object. Right? Remember, the photograph is our point of departure. It's there for information. Right? The flow of the material is very important. Space is coming towards us. Right. 
correct cross hashing. find this eye socket on this side a little bit and the space is moving in into the skull into the skull wrap around there. Okay. The cheekbone, right? Teeth come down here. And the molars around the back. Right, and that jawbone fits right underneath the, the cheekbone right there. There's like the mandibular joint there, right? Okay. And you can see there's an immediate effect of light. Okay. Our light source is coming from that direction. I'm picking up the light energy with the lines. Yeah, so you can see how the wash helps establish the values very quickly. Um, the values are put in um, immediately, right? And the values are put in as a form, right? Those shapes, those abstract shapes that I created, right? And... Um, The, the 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 value holds throughout the drawing the wash Right, and the cross, you can see how that cross hatching is implemented. And there's a play between the, the lines and the wash. They're, kind of, they're used independently of each other.
right? So I got a little bit of lint on my tip there. It's getting, so I got to clean it off. All right, pull it off. Okay. And can continue to this guy needs some dental work, but that's besides the point here. Okay. You can see how quickly the drawing gets developed using that wash, right? The um, the effect of light is rather immediate if if done properly, right? Our light source you can see again is from left to right. It's coming this way across the page, right? And in the shadow areas where I can get busy with my cross hatching. I kind of left this dark area on purpose so that it, the cross hatching would be established in the drawing in the dark area. And you can see how the, the wash and the lines, okay, you kind of, you kind of work to uh, melding them together to, you know, to integrating the, the values, right? Using the two, two techniques together. It's a very, very expressive way of drawing. It's a classical way. Many of the masters use this way of drawing. Um, there's a term called chiaroscuro, which is very relevant to pen and ink drawing. It's a term that's describing the darks and lights, the drama, the dramatic use of dark and light contrasts to show form. Okay. Okay, so we're moving along here, cross hatching. Following the direction of the space, it's coming towards us, right? Okay, so I, I needed to get a fresh ink well here. Much better.
can get into it even more over here. Is in the shadow area. Okay, pretty cool, right? So, I'm going to continue to just put in those values that we need to make this drawing interesting. Um, okay. Continuing to push on these values. Okay, and I, I want to really make a statement up with the shadow area over here. I want to make it a mysterious, mysterious and... dark in certain areas. Okay, back to this.
trying to change my angles here so my values don't clog up. From light to dark, right? So coming towards us, side of the skull there. So you can see how this, I'm working the pen and ink part of it independently of the wash. Whereas it's not like filling in the, you know, outlining and filling in the wash. It's the other way around, you establish the wash and then you define the form further using the pen and ink. Okay. what I want. I want to get that cross-hatching way in there. Nice and dark. There's a certain expressive quality to it that I like. Just one of those folds coming in between there. All right. Finding the shadow side a little bit. Wow. 
And you can see how that wash really comes through in the end. You can really see it. a lot of detail in with this pin and ink stuff. A lot of detail. Okay. Notice I'm doing the whole drawing at once. I'm all over it. helps to be able to rotate the drawing to because one of the things that you may not be noticing but I'm struggling not to smudge the drawing by keeping my wrist above but your wrist when you're using this you know you're putting down these lines your wrist wants to rest and it's sort of a little bit of a struggle that fold there a little bit. very expressive way of drawing, spontaneous, right? Now I'm just finishing up the drawing. Okay.
Okay, so there's a pen and ink and wash drawing, right? Very good. Quick and spontaneous, and that's what it's meant to be. It's a, it's a rapid way. Um, it's a little bit of a, um, oh, it's a way of drawing that's uh, very expressive. It can be classical, expressionistic. Um, so, there you go. Okay. Very good. So you have light coming through the image nicely. Okay. There's air in the image. Right. And um, some expression. The, the underlying wash is rather abstract in the sense that it holds together the whole drawing in a very graphic way. Okay. And there we are.